Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar titled Accelerating Vaccine Development Using a Next Generation Microfluidic CE Platform. This webinar is a part of the ongoing coronavirus virtual webinar series. My name is Christy Jewell of Labberts, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by Labberts and sponsored by Perkin Elmer. For more information about Perkin Elmer, go to perkinelmer.com. Now let's get started. I would like to remind everyone that today's event is interactive, and we encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We will answer as many of your questions as we have time for. If you have trouble seeing or hearing today's presentation, click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. As a reminder, today's presentation is educational and offers free continuing education credits. Click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located at the top right corner of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. I now present today's speaker, Jeray Thelwell, Mid-Atlantic and Southeast Biotherapeutic Solution Specialist at Perkin Elmer. For a complete biography on our speaker, please visit the biography tab at the top of your screen. Welcome, Jeray. You may now begin your presentation. Hello, my name is Jeray, and I'm a Biotherapeutic Solution Specialist here at Prick and Elmer. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to you a little bit about the vaccine development process, as well as relevant solutions offered by Perk and Elmer's LabChip GX2 Touch HT. When producing a quality vaccine, all manufacturers must confirm the purity as well as the stability of their formulation and final product. Sample quantity and measurement time are often the throughput bottlenecks encountered during the process. As Perkin Elmer's LabChip GX2 Touch addresses these specific gaps and more, we've developed a literature-centric webinar demonstrating the system's utility in protein characterization, formulation, stability testing, and manufacturing quality control and commercialization. Having been employed in bringing nearly 20 drugs to market, the system has been widely adopted throughout the biopharmaceutical industry and is often featured as an imperative process development tool with additional applications throughout discovery. Herein, I'll begin by reviewing the vaccine development process before delving into relevant applications on a LabChip GX2 Touch. The goal of vaccine process development is to develop a manufacturing process that can consistently produce a vaccine that is safe and efficacious. Vaccines are biological products that prevent and control the occurrence of infectious diseases and epidemic. Vaccines and vaccine candidates are designed to direct against bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, and even non-infectious diseases. The process can be simplified into preclinical development and clinical development. Preclinical development is the research stage carried out in lab assays and on animals. This includes discovery of relevant antigens, vaccine concept design, evaluation of vaccine efficacy with in vivo and, and in vitro assays, as well as manufacturing process development of the vaccine to GMP standards. Clinical development is when the vaccine is first tested in humans and spans four phases over several years which we can delve into in a greater detail. Built on rigorous acceptance criteria, clinical development emphasizes vaccine safety and efficacy in humans. These studies are completed with the informed consent of volunteers. After animal testing, only vaccine candidates that are considered safe and induce immunity may advance through these phases. Phase zero, though often skipped, is an exploratory phase where a very small group is treated with subtherapeutic amounts of the drug or vaccine. This is done to determine pharmacokinetics and the general metabolic impact. This is roughly 10 people. More commonly, a drug or vaccine will begin at phase one. These are small scale trials that evaluate if the vaccine is safe in humans and what response it evokes. This involves studies on healthy volunteers, roughly 100 people, with the, with the drug being administered at multiple doses. 
Phase two is of a larger scale and assesses the efficacy of the vaccine against artificial infection and clinical disease. This will include testing on actual patients with therapeutic doses. Vaccine safety, side effects, and the immune response are all studied, and this is about 300 people. Phase three expands to a larger disease population of over 1,000 subjects across several sites to where efficacy under natural disease conditions is measured. At this point, if the product maintains safety and efficacy over a defined period, the manufacturer may apply to the regulatory authorities for a license to market the product for human use. Lastly, phase four assesses the drug or vaccine use in public. This is called post-marketing surveillance and the goal is to detect rare adverse effects as well as assess long-term efficacy. Once a product makes it to market, manufacturing must scale accordingly to, to meet demand. The production of a vaccine can be further divided into four steps. Propagation and isolation. Propagation is amplification of the living organism used in the vaccine. Manufacturers use different methods of pathogen proliferation according to the vaccine to obtain pathogenic proteins or DNA. This will generate the antigen used in the immune response. Viruses are grown on primary cells such as chicken embryos or using fertilized eggs or cell lines that reproduce repeatedly. Bacteria are grown in bioreactors using a particular growth medium to optimize antigen production. Recombinant proteins derived from the pathogen therefore can be generated either in yeast, bacteria, or cell cultures. Following propagation is isolation of the antigen. The aim is to release as much virus or bacteria as possible. To achieve this, the antigen is separated from the cells and isolated from the proteins and other parts of the growth medium that are still present. Purification. The antigen is purified to produce a high purity and high quality product. All material that may be adherent to the isolated organism is removed and the portion of the living organism used in the vaccine is selectively separated, employing techniques based on the differences in protein size, physical and chemical properties, bonding affinity, and biochemical activity. Formulation. Formulation includes the antigen of interest in addition to other components like adjuvants, preservatives, stabilizers. All components that constitute the final vaccine are combined and mixed uniformly. Finally, there's packaging. The vaccine is aliquot into sterile vials, appropriately stored, and then shipped everywhere. The global vaccine market is projected to reach 58.4 billion USD by 2024 from 41.7 billion USD in 2019 at a compound annual growth rate of 7% during the forecast period. The growth of this market has been majorly attributed to the high prevalence of infectious diseases, increasing company initiatives to enhance vaccine R&D, and growing government support for vaccine development. However, in light of the novel coronavirus pandemic, how might we expect this forecast to change? The global COVID-19 vaccines market alone is projected to reach 1.4 billion USD by 2025 from 2.27 million USD in 2022 at a compound annual growth rate of negative 14.9% during the forecast period. However, the capital investments required for developing vaccines may restrain market growth. With that said, the technology primarily being used to complete much of the necessary analysis is antiquated. Conventional gel electrophoresis as a standard for determination of analyte size, concentration, and purity substantially hinders the manufacturing quality assurance process. Labor costs for agarose gel systems as well as SDS paid systems far exceed those for a capillary electrophoresis system because the time required for the analysis is much greater 
often 101 to 191 minutes, numerous consumables must also be purchased to use the agarose gel system. Although the unit per cost per sample is only a few dollars, there are about a dozen individual items to purchase. Thus, the cost per sample with Page Gel is about $3.12 to $5.62 for 12 samples, as compared to little as $1.50 per sample when measuring up to 96 samples on the labs of GX2 Touch, a process that will take roughly an hour. Downstream, the lab chip is able to provide substantial value. Considering the many challenges in the optimized scale of production, purification and quality assurance are of the most importance. Vaccines are biological products, thus adhere to high regulatory standards for mitigating the risk to consumer health. As a quantitative and reproducible tool is the ideal solution for this process development, herein I'd like to discuss the Laptop GX2's high throughput capillary electrophoresis platform. The Laptop GX2 Touch HT is a high throughput instrument for the analysis of glycoproteins and nucleic acids via microfluidic capillary electrophoresis in the presence of SDS. The system offers an automated alternative to traditional methods for streamlining slab gel electrophoresis while also providing the data quality crucial to modern biotherapeutic and genomic workflows. The system has four components. Our instrument. This has a small 20 by 20 inch footprint and features an easy to use touchscreen integrated with an onboard Windows 10 computer. Our kit and chip consumable is used to perform the laser-induced fluorescency technology, both are reusable, and our analysis software providing electrophorogram as well as virtual gel outputs reporting concentration, size, and purity of your analyte. Adoption of the platform from R&D into quality control and manufacturing release is enabled by an optional 21 CFR 11 compliance package. This is ideal for automatically establishing an audit trail with a secure central data repository and archive, as well as access level privileges and electronic signature capabilities. As mentioned, the system analyzes nucleic acid as well as protein and thus is a powerful analytical tool with many applications in the vaccine development and manufacturing space. In the coming slides, We'll highlight a few of what's listed here. A distinguished benefit of the LabShip platform is that it's extremely easy to use. This, in addition to the measurement speed, make it a very attractive solution for teams employing research technicians. The protein assay workflow can be broken down into sample prep and ship prep, which may be completed in parallel. For sample prep, Two microliters of sample is added to our sample buffer in a micro titer plate, followed by heat denaturing. During chip prep, a gel dye solution is centrifuged and then added to the microchip. The chip, sample plate, and ladder standard can then be placed on the instrument to begin measurement. This process takes about 20 minutes. Note the DNA workflow is very similar and does not require heat denaturation. Protein applications. These days, recombinant protein technologies are being becoming more important due to their wide applications as biopharmaceutical products and proven safety record. Various recombinant proteins of therapeutic and prophylactic importance have been successfully produced in microbial and high expression host systems. Most of the vaccines currently being developed are based on these purified recombinant proteins or antigen subunits. Recombinant subunit vaccines use attenuated viruses or bacteria vectors to introduce microbial DNA into cells of the body. The protein components that induce the immune response are peptides or antigens expressed in eukaryotic or prokaryotic expression systems. Expression systems for vaccine production include prokaryotic expression systems such as E. coli, 
and eukaryotic systems such as yeast or mammalian cells or even insect cells. Due to the high levels of expression and ease of handling, bacterial expression systems are the most widely used system. As an example, this is a published study by Vertex from the Journal of Analytical Biochemistry on the application of a design of experiment for antigen expression optimization utilizing the LabShip GX2 technology. The 3D bar chart depicts the results of the full factorial screening and clearly identifies the optimal protein expression condition. Each data point was obtained and measured in triplicate, requiring 288 individual measurements, a largely iterative process that would take two weeks using a conventional non-quantitative gel setup but only an afternoon using the lab chip. The authors praise the increased throughput and economies of scale that now allow for the experiments that were either prohibitively expensive or too complex to perform. Virus-like particles, or VLPs, are non-infectious nanostructures composed of viral stru structural proteins morphologically resembling authentic virions. Several VLP-based vaccine candidates have been shown to be efficacious in preclinical and clinical trials. Some of them have reached the market and most are targeting non-enveloped viruses. Compared to non-enveloped VLPs, eVLPs are much more complex in com composition. In this example, published in electrophoresis, Researchers at the NIH's Vaccine Research Center utilize the LabShip GX2 touch in a study for characterizing Venezuelan equine encephalitis, or VEE, virus-like particles. This is a VLP featuring the complex lipid envelope moiety. The top figure is an electrophorogram profile overlay depicting the particle separation observed in all three serotypes. The axes correspond to size in kilodalton versus relative fluorescent units. The area under the curve corresponds to the percent amount of particle component within the total sample. The bottom graph is a representative calibration curve for VEE with axes corresponding to VLP concentration in microgram per milliliter versus area response. These authors commend the method sensitivity for analyzing low concentration vaccine candidates both in process development samples and the final drug. Note the standard method for envelope virus-like particle quantitation requires additional preparation and may lengthen the analysis by up to three times. Closing this section out, I'd like to talk a little bit about AAVs as this technology also exhibits promising potential in the vaccine space. On the left is a six, is a six human infecting viruses that appear somewhat similar. From bottom left, clockwise, we have influenza virus, norovirus, Oxsackie virus, enterovirus D68, poliovirus, and finally, adeno-associated virus, which we're highlighting in the right image. Adeno-associated virus is a small non-pathogenic virus consisting of a protein shell which encapsulates a 4.7 kilobase genome. Originally cited in 1965 as a replication defective contaminant of adenovirus stock, today AAVs have the magnificent purpose of serving as vehicles for gene delivery. Gene therapy vectors using AAV can infect both dividing and quiescent cells with several serotypes demonstrating preferences for different tissue. The rep gene encodes four proteins required for genome replication and packaging. The cap gene produces three viral proteins, VP1, VP2, and VP3, which forms a protective outer shell and aids in host cell binding. The lab chips microfluidic CESDS has already been proven to be a welcome alternative for quantifying capsid proteins VP1, VP2, VP3 and contaminating proteins in AAVs as compared to the qualitative interpretation of SDS page with silver staining, where reproducibility is a challenge and densitometry can be manipulated. 
Note, this is only one of the many solutions for AV characterization offered on the lab chip. For years, Perkin Elmer's microfluidic CE has been adopted in the monoclonal antibody industry as a quantitative and reproducible analysis approach with excellent sensitivity and speed yielding digital records in the GMP environment. As the production of drugs and vaccines is achieved from the propagation of living organisms, some of which may be dangerous to human pathogens, it is not only pertinent that manufacturing is conducted in a highly regulated and controlled environment, but also that we can maintain confidence in the final product. With that said, the lab chip has been used widely throughout the biopharma not only to ensure the identity, strength, and quality of drug substances, but also to screen the performance of pharmaceutical excipients and monitor the chemical and physical stability of the antigen within these complex matrices. Nucleic acid applications. As the lab chip is an extremely versatile system, it can also be used to analyze nucleic acids. In applications related to recombinant vaccine development, it is crucial to screen the plasmid library. Preceding introduction into a host cell, the length and quality of the recombinant DNA components must be confirmed. Compared to the conventional acro shells, the lab chip provides greater sensitivity and higher resolution. Here we compare three commercial ladder standards measured on a 2% agarose gel and on the lab chip. With roughly 60 seconds for measurement, this is completed in less than three minutes using our DNA 5K assay, compared to the 30 minutes needed to achieve separation on this 2% and vitrogen e -gel. Note the e -gel does not resolve the triplet of 413, 417, and 427 base pair fragments or any fragments above 3,000 base pair. This is a critical bottleneck within a technology for quality checking plasmid fragments as a result can be an ineffective batch. Given the sensitivity and resolution of the lab chip, it not only, not only resolves these rapidly, but can handle much larger oligonucleotides. The same system can similarly be used for RNA analysis. Demonstrated on this slide is mRNA expression data generated on the lab chip. The sensitivity and resolution featured in other assays is mirrored here with the added benefit of a calculated RNA quality score, or RQS, determined by the degree of sample degradation. Holding to our vaccine development regime, We'll close by speaking briefly about RNA vaccines. RNA vaccines are novel as they do not stimulate and prime the body's immune response. These vaccines work by introducing an mRNA sequence, which is coded for a disease-specific antigen. The quality assurance metrics for these cons constructs may be confirmed on the lab chip and are extremely important for vaccine efficacy. Once produced within the body, the antigen is recognized itself by the immune system and is therefore prepared to combat the real thing. Wrapping up, the lab chip GX2 Touch HT is a high throughput instrument for the analysis of glycoproteins and nucleic acids via microfluidic capillary electrophoresis in the presence of SDS. Adoption of the platform from R&D into quality control and manufacturing release is enabled by an optional 21 CFR 11 compliance package. When producing a quality vaccine, all manufacturers must comply with GMP regulations as well as maintain confidence in their product. Perkin Elmer's lab chip GX2 Touch offers a quantitative and reproducible platform for not only confirming the purity and stability of the final product, but also means for providing a variety of additional analyses from protein expression and characterization to even glycan analysis and charge heterogeneity. As a multifaceted instrument, it would be a welcome addition to almost any laboratory settings, especially that of a vaccine development center. With that said, thank you very much for your time.
I'd like to conclude by citing the excellent literature and image sources featured during this talk. For questions on the content of this presentation, as well as additional information on Perkin Elmer Solutions for Automation and Microfluidics, please refer to my contact information displayed here. It was a pleasure preparing this for you, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a wonderful day. Stay healthy, happy, and inquisitive. Thank you, DeRay, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of our webinar. Now to our audience, if you have a question you would like to ask, please do so now. Just click on that Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we will answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Okay, let's get started. Jure, let's start with this question. Aside from protein sizing and purity, what other assays are available? And that's a great question. So it's a very versatile instrument. In addition to protein, it can do DNA and RNA. But uh, still in the protein space, I'd like to highlight that it has the capability of analyzing end-linked glycans and could also do charge variant if you're interested in seeing the acidic and basic moieties of your protein. So it's, uh, it's pretty versatile in what it can do. Great question. Thank you. And how fast can the lab chip analyze my protein sample? So it's a very high throughput instrument. It's actually able to do protein samples in about 42 seconds per sample, and that's for our base assay. We have assays that go up to 62 seconds, but it's a uh, when you compare it to doing a page shell that could take you a couple hours for about 12 samples, it's a uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good on the speed front, I'd say. But 42 seconds is the answer. Thank you. Our next question, I have limited samples. How can the lab chip help me? And that's another good question. So it's a microfluidic CE system. So the sample input is minimum. When you're actually preparing for the protein assay, you only need two microliters of sample. And that will go through our workflow. When the sipper on the chip actually injects it into the system, it actually only sips nanoliters. So it actually preserves a lot of your samples, so you're able to kind of freeze the plates and reuse them afterwards if you like. Very good. And Jeru, we have time for one more question. What's the sizing range for biologics on the lab chip? And that's a, and so it's a good question because we recently released a new assay. So we're actually able to size from six kilodaltons up to 250 kilodaltons. So it's a pretty broad range for what we're able to analyze on that machine. Thank you, Jure. Now, do you have any final comments for our audience? Uh, I'd say it was a fantastic time preparing this for you all. And I recommend that you check out the Perkin Hour booth download some literature, watch our videos, and chat with the representatives to see what solutions we have within the portfolio that could help you accelerate your research. Thank you so much for your time listening, and thank you so much for your help, Christina. And thank you, Jeray, for your time today and your important research. Now, before we go, I do want to thank our audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. We had quite a few questions we were unable to answer, so I want to remind our audience that those questions we were unable to answer, and additionally those that come in during the on-demand period, they will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. One final thank you to our sponsor, Perkin Elmer. Now today's webcast can be viewed on demand through the, through the end of this year, 2020. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. And we encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.